These are the stories that keep me up at night. The missing, the murdered, the mysteries that have gone unsolved in our own backyards. I've reported on crime in North Texas for more than 25 years. And now I'm opening my reporter's notebook to you, revisiting cold cases, retracing steps, and revealing evidence we've never seen before. The Sharon Davis case is one of those cases that a reporter always remembers, and I remember her disappearance like it was yesterday. She was a mom, she was a teacher, she was a volunteer, and by all accounts, everyone really loved her, and then she just disappeared, poof, just off the face of the earth. She's just gone. There's a picture of uh, me and my mother. I believe I was about two years old here. She was a very warm person, very kind, uh, optimistic, just very positive person. On June 13th of 2001, Sharon went to a bus stop to drop her daughter, Autumn, off, who was going to work that morning. I was working a summer job downtown, and my mother dropped me off at the park and ride, and that was the last time I saw her. Autumn told me that her mother was partially dressed. She had on sweatpants, she had on her robe, because she was planning on going back home that morning and getting ready to go to a continuing education class that she was taking. That day, she was in a really good mood, um, you know, smiling and just, you know, rushing to make sure that I got to the stop on time. My mother, me and my brother. Sharon had two kids. She had Autumn, who was 18, and Ron Davis Jr., who was 20, and he was in college at the time of her disappearance. Autumn says she knew immediately that there was something wrong. Her mom was a creature of habit, so when she didn't show up at 6 o'clock that evening, they knew something had happened to her. I called my brother, and that was when my brother decided to get on the highway and see maybe if she had car trouble and the car broke down. They didn't find Sharon's vehicle right away. They found it several days later outside a gym where she typically worked out. We talked to the lieutenant in charge of that case, Lieutenant Sally Lanham. There's no DNA, there's no fingerprints, there's no witnesses. It was panic because they find the vehicle she was driving and not her. Quite honestly, people just don't disappear. It's usually something bad's happened. Police, uh, by all accounts, and even the children say that Ron Davis Sr., her husband, was uncooperative with police. He didn't immediately do an interview with them and didn't allow them to search the home right away. So the detectives were unable to arrange a time and, and talk with him for several weeks. So his lack of cooperation obviously raises some red flags. So police say they weren't able to get into her home right away until maybe several weeks later when they finally got a warrant. And when they went in, there had been some remodeling, specifically a bathroom that had been remodeled, but they didn't find any evidence. I went to talk to Ron Davis at his home. He didn't want to go on camera, but he did say that he cooperated with the Dallas Police Department. He interviewed with them twice. He says he's the one that reported his wife missing the very next day, and he allowed them into his home to search voluntarily. She had filed for divorce. She contacted an attorney, and the attorney had filed for divorce just a couple days before she disappeared. And then this happens where she's gone. He says that his wife twice had filed for divorce but had withdrawn it and that he had not received the notice of the latest divorce filing a couple of days before she disappeared. And he says on the day that she disappeared, $20,000 in cash was missing from the home. And he maintains he had nothing to do with his wife's disappearance. They have never found Sharon Davis's body, so this continues to be a missing persons case. And because it's a missing persons case, it is not a crime, so there are no suspects in this case at this time, including any family members. It started as a missing persons case, and it continues, and it remains a missing persons case until she's located alive, or God forbid, she's deceased. This case is now assigned to the Special Investigative Unit. It's an elite unit within DPD that has some of the best detectives. I fell in love with the case, and, and you know, yeah, it's a challenge, but like I said, there's, there's somebody out there you know, that, that knows something. We still haven't lost hope. I would, <laughs> I would love for my mom to just come in right now and be alive and give me a big hug. 
If you know anything about this case, we would love to hear from you. You can email Rebecca at rlopez at wfaa.com.